The beautiful part about college football season being less than 20 days away is we get to actually talk about college football games. We get to take an actual look at this schedule, what we got on the docket, and some games that we should really pay attention to. If you watched our previous live shows, you know that we did a sneaky game segment and we approached it saying, okay, let's take a look at where all the sneaky games are on the schedule. We got through like the first month of the season and we had four or five games for you. So wanted to pick up where we left off there. Sneaky games volume two. Want to make sure we mention this off the top though. These are not upset predictions. And these are not the games that college game day is going to be at or big noon kickoff is going to be at. These are the matchups that maybe you don't have a ton of attention paid to going into the week. But when it comes to Saturday afternoon, you're like, whoa, 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 what's the score? What channel is that on? Flip it to that channel right now because that's a good game. So week eight is where I want to start. And you got Duke going to Florida State. And this is homecoming of Florida State. And my question here is, how does Florida State handle a sleepy October? Because they have a bye week the last weekend of September. And they have Virginia Tech at home. They got Syracuse at home. It is very difficult as a football team to downshift competitively and then get back to where you need to be at to beat top teams in the country. Now, I'm not calling Duke a top team in the country. Florida State, from a roster standpoint, should wipe the floor with Duke. There's no way around that. But if Florida State wants to walk out on homecoming and not really have their head all the way in the game and they're not really used to playing this kind of competition the last couple of weeks, Duke has a quarterback that you've probably heard a lot about in NFL draft circles, Riley Leonard. Some people think he's the best NFL draft prospect of the quarterbacks going to be in the draft next year, not named Caleb Williams or Drake May. The bottom line is the dude can play and the offense can score points. They scored 32 points a game last year. They have 82% of that offense back. Riley Leonard also a dual threat quarterback. So there's that whole other element you have to defend if you're Florida State. I'm just curious how Florida State reacts to this kind of competition. Okay, because again, having to play Virginia Tech and Syracuse the weeks before, like that doesn't really rev the engine too much if Florida State doesn't take Duke seriously this will be a very real game in the fourth quarter now if they handle business and and they you know put this thing to rest early whole other conversation but I'm very very curious to watch that game again a sneaky game week eight make sure you're locked into that one now let's go all the way to week 10 and we got Penn State at Maryland Maryland now they gave a couple of teams some scares last year It took Ohio State four quarters to beat them the week before the Michigan game. And it took Michigan four quarters to beat them. I mean, it was a one-score game is what it finished at. It was 34-27 for Penn State. Now, here's the interesting thing. Penn State goes to College Park, Maryland the week before they play Michigan. So much buzz around Happy Valley right now for good reason. Ton of super sophomores. You got Nick Singleton. You have Katron Allen. You got Abdul Carter. You got Drew Aller, who is the main reason for optimism in Happy Valley. Ton of buzz, ton of excitement. The question is can they beat Ohio State? Can they beat Michigan? The week before Michigan, you got to go on the road and play a team like Maryland that has proven historically they are feisty. Maybe not against Penn State, but against other teams, they are feisty. And the thing with them, too, they have a dynamic quarterback in Talia Tagavailoa. Anytime you have a dual threat quarterback that can move and shake the way that he does, that adds an extra burden to the defense, not just to scheme for it, but I mean when the play breaks down and Talia Tagovailoa breaks contain and he's rolling out right and it's basically a brand new play. You might have had the right play drawn up for what Maryland was running before, but that whole play is dead. It's broken. Now we got Talia Tagovailoa playing backyard football with you. It takes a little bit extra oomph, a little bit extra motivation, a little bit of extra juice in your motor to go run around and chase down a quarterback like that like it's annoying I promise you defensive coordinators defensive linemen they hate doing that if they don't bring their a game and Talia Tagovailoa kind of gets some momentum rolling he makes a few plays on the run gets some belief Uncle Mo enters the building for Maryland like look out now look out I'm not saying Maryland wins the football game I'm just saying this is a horrendous spot if you're Penn State having to play them the week before Michigan and it's going to be a lot of a lot of intrigue on this one because Penn State like we said they're they're a younger team in some spots quarterback going to be a first year starter young guys in the backfield for you a lot of a lot of guys that maybe have, have played before but maybe aren't as used to you know situations like this and really key spots like we just mentioned let's take it a step further 
what if Maryland draws first blood? What if we look up in the first quarter and it's 13-0, Maryland? How do they respond to that? I think we find out a lot about Penn State in this game. Now let's go to the next week. We got week 11. We got Alabama going to Kroger Field. Seeing the KSR boys. They go and play at Kentucky. And Alabama is coming off the game against LSU. And LSU, I promise you, I mean, we, we always know what this game is if we're college football fans. We always know what Bama LSU means. High intensity, tons of emotion. I mean, it came down to the very last play last season, a two-point conversion for LSU to walk it off. Like, we know how draining that game can be on a football team. So to play LSU and then have to go on the road and play Kentucky, that's going to be a brutal little stretch now. And Bama, last year, I think they'll be better defensively because of reasons we've talked about here. I think the scheme will be better. I think they will have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder as it pertains to proving something defensively. But last year, man, hey, they were not great against dynamic wide receivers. Texas game comes to mind. Tennessee game comes to mind. It's new personnel, but still, how do they look? Because Kentucky, they've got some dynamic wide receivers now. Dane Key, probably one of the best wide receivers that nobody's talking about. Barry and Brown was a freshman All-American for us here at On3. Tavian Robinson said, run that back. Like, they got a cast of characters now, and if you want to double one of them, you leave a little bit less attention on the other. And they've got a guy that can spin it. I mean, I've, I've talked about it a lot on this show. I don't understand why nobody's talking about Devin Leary. But the dude can absolutely play ball. I mean, before he got hurt last season, going into last season, a lot of people were talking about him as a top five quarterback. So there's a recipe there. There is a path there for Kentucky to make this one very, very interesting. If Bama does not play up to their standard, and if they're a little bit lackluster from the week before, it could be very, very intriguing. Also, make sure that we, that we mention this. Uh, Kentucky played Georgia in Lexington last year. Final score was 16-6. to six. If nothing else, Mark Stoops will have this team ready to roll. So that's definitely a sneaky game. And one, again, that you could look at and say, wow, Bama's only up by three in the third quarter. What's going on there? So very, very sneaky game right there. High sneak value, if you will, when it comes to Bama at Kentucky. Now, week 12 is the last one I want to talk about here. We got Oklahoma headed to new Big 12 conference member, BYU. And I don't want to argue about the roster. I'm not telling you Oklahoma is somehow outmatched by, by BYU. But the fact you got to go on the road the week before you play TCU in your regular season finale, if you're Oklahoma, who knows what's at stake in this game? Who knows how much they're walking the tightrope here to get to the Big 12 title? Or who knows what the college football playoff implications are? Who knows? But BYU, you don't want to play them at home, man. The last two years, they are 9-3 in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Okay, They're, for whatever reason, Kalani Sataki's got that group ready to roll when you play them in Provo. And in games like this, where the roster does have you outmatched if you're BYU, it just takes one matchup. And Cody Epps was a wide receiver, is a wide receiver for BYU, but he did jump in the transfer portal for a certain period of time. There were a lot of schools now blowing up his cell phone, banging down his door saying, Cody, come play for us. A lot of big-time Power 5 schools, a lot of SEC schools that wanted Cody Epps to play for them last year. They also got Keaton Slovis playing quarterback for BYU. Remember Keaton Slovis? He's well-traveled. He was at USC. Then he was at Pitt. If Oklahoma doesn't figure it out in the secondary, this is going to be a really interesting game because Oklahoma allowed 274 yards passing last year per game. They won't have all the matchups will be why you that they're not probably going to have the matchup on the line of scrimmage or whatever you want to talk about. But if they have this one matchup with the pass game with Keaton Slovis and the secondary with Oklahoma, this will get interesting. This will get interesting. So we'll see what happens there. But again, those are the sneaky games for us at week eight. We got Duke at Florida State week 10. We got Penn State at Maryland. Huge, huge look ahead spot for the Nittany Lions week 11. You got Bama at Kentucky Bama going on the road after having just played LSU. Where are they at psyche wise? Then Oklahoma at BYU BYU man, you don't want to play them at home. Who knows what Oklahoma is playing for at that point in time and they play TCU the next week. A lot of dominoes that are going to fall before we get to those games. But those are the games that I want to make sure we're all on the same page for that you can tell your friends about. Hey, keep an eye on that game. Keep an eye on Duke at Florida State. Keep an eye on Bama at Kentucky as we get into those weeks of the beautiful thing that is the college football season. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.